Hello everybody, welcome back. In this video, we are going to continue with the series that's been kind of dragged out and I want to apologize about it being dragged out. We are producing this progressive trance track and we're kind of uh, going through a lot of new, not new techniques, maybe new for some of you out there techniques for producing a progressive trance, trance production in general. And uh, I'm just going to play what I've got here. I've added a little bit of percussion, kind of been working on the breakdown, worked a little bit on the bass effect part, uh, played around with some automation, filtering. And so let me just play it through and then we'll dig right in and uh, we'll see if this spire plays back the way it's supposed to. It's been giving me trouble, this ocean lab. I don't know about this Spire 1.1. It's been giving me trouble. I don't think I'm going to use it anymore in new productions. But I've already got a lot of automation written on this track, so uh, I'm kind of hesitant to uh, lose all of that by swapping it out with the old Spire, which I still have. Okay, let me just, let me just shut up and play this for you. All right?
Okay, so that's what we have for right now. By the way, this is the first uh, regular tutorial with the new boom microphone, and I hope you like it. I hope you think the uh, it sounds better. One of the things I was kind of fighting with uh, getting my new laptop was uh, the fan noise kicking up. You can probably hear it right now. So the solution is to turn the mic channel down. But anyways, that really has nothing to do with this track. So one of the things with that playback that I noticed, and it's, it's kind of bugging me. Well, first of all, let me just solo these two parts here. This is kind of the new percussion part that I added. That's a little quiet right there. I can take that up. So it's kind of a quirky beginning, but again, this is a dance track, and this is just kind of the lead in to where it, where it really starts kicking in here. Then it starts kicking in here. Flux. And then I kind of added the guitar to kind of add a little atmosphere. I'm obviously going to add more atmosphere as the track progresses, especially in the front half here. So I brought the guitar forward a little bit here, and then it kind of fades out in the pluck section here. Because when the plucks hit before, it was kind of sparse. So let me show you that here. Let me mute that for you here. And you'll see how sparse it is without it. Now I'll unmute it. So it adds a little subtle background atmosphere. Okay, and then what I did over here, and I think I have an idea. Let me just magnify this for you. I've got a little reverse right here, 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 and here. I believe that was the only one. What I want to do is I want to duplicate this exact same track then select these all again. Okay, let's, let me play this here. Just, I'll just play it for you. You can hear that right here. Okay, so I'm not quite sure what's going on there right here, but I think I'm going to leave that as it is. It's not really changing the overall sound. So what I did is I duplicated this exact track. I'm going to drag these all down here so they're on their separate track. They no longer exist up here. And I'm going to modify this to where I have a... Let's go with a sample delay so they'll be super wide when they hit. See how that sounds. And if not, I, there's always undo, right? Okay, so here we go. Okay, that sounds really good. This one here is came up a little bit short. Let me drag this one. Whoop. I'm going to drag this one. It's not quite where it should be. I think that's where it belongs. Wait. I'm going to take and drag this one over. And it can fill a spot. Now you see what I did. I created a situation where we have contrast. And so what I'll do here is I'll mute this 
I'm going to bring this last one over here. I don't know why sometimes when you're doing stuff like this, it can act kind of funny. Okay, let's see here. All right. And of course, this part right here. This is just the super compressed part that kind of adds a little bit of the bouncy high frequency part. All right. Okay, now we're back to normal. So let's see how this sounds here. Now you guys all understand what I did there. I, I basically, I can make as many tracks as I want in my sequencer, even to do just one small little part like that. I create a new track and I have a spread out reverse kind of, kind of a growl, growl, you know, let me just play it for you here. That kind of feeds into the main part. And when played in context, it sounds pretty cool. All right. So it's just that kind of experimentation is that's accessible within all of the modern technology that we have. And that's kind of, uh, kind of part and parcel to dance music in particular. That's why I love this type of music so much because your what you can do is only limited by your imagination and so i encourage you to experiment around like that okay so over here what i have is i added this diva and i kind of like this instrument i don't know if it's really dialed in yet for this part let me magnify this right here open automation and right there, that's the gain i have a the diva frequency let me just play that for you here so it's really kind of a neat patch and it kind of creates a bouncing growling bass in the background and what i have here is when it's when I have the filter opening up, I have automation turning it down. I don't want that to be super loud. Just kind of adding a little bit of interest in the breakdown. And I let me tell you, the breakdown needs a lot more interest right now than it has. Now, if I were to leave that at regular volume, it would be too loud. It would be kind of out of place. But just at minus 5 dBs, it takes it down enough, creates enough interest in context. Okay, and so let me, I'm going to open this up here. I want to take a look at something here. So I'm getting multiple notes here, so I'm 
Okay. So, all these little notes need to go away. So I'm going to mute all these notes. Okay, I didn't want those uh, little ghost notes. The da 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 da. I just want the da da da. So, in other words, I just want it with these notes in here. See, I don't want that little note, so I deleted all of those. Okay, so yeah, let's just. Uh, Focus here on the breakdown again. Okay, and so what I've done here is that I've you've got a piano uh, main bus. Okay, let me open automation here. So I've got it filtered way down. I got it filtered down to about twelve hundred hertz, and that sounds a little low. So I'm going to take it down to say. 1600 and then i got the reverb send tied uh, about the same let's try to fine tune this in to where it doesn't sound so dead that's a little bit better another thing that i can do is i can add a gain all right, go to the gain, gain, and then just turn it up right here when it's filtered down so it doesn't lay so flat. It'll still sound like it's off in the distance, so I can even actually take this down instead of jumping the gun on the filter. Let me take it back down. Let's see how that sounds. A little bit more volume. Okay, so what I want to do now is I want to work on a transition here to the outro, just to complete the track. Instead of uh, scratching my head here on the breakdown, what I want to do here is just get rid of all these. In fact, let's just delete that. So when it ends, it goes... Okay, and I think it would be all right to leave that part that I don't like in. And let's just, well. Take it to right there. Okay, so that's kind of like a little bridge. And then what I would want to do is kind of just 
go into where the plucks came in. Say right here. And then, all right, so I'm setting locators. Now I'm going to take everything. Let me, let's get rid of this so I, you can see what we're doing here. Then I'm going to drag. Make sure I'm not dragging any looped parts. And let's get rid of this thing, whatever that is. All right, so let's select everything again. And maybe those two right there, too. A little fill there. Okay. All right, looks like that's lined up. Copy. And we did have a... And Logic's not going to cooperate here, so... Let's see, where do we want to be here? We want to be... Right there. Okay, end the loops where they're supposed to end. Okay, let's see how this sounds here. Gotta love it. Okay, obviously the filter would be not opened up, so... Let's see what happened here. Okay. Okay. Let's take this down. That was just one one kind of little glitch there. Close enough for government work right there. Well, there we go. Okay, that has the... It's a possibility, all right? So I'm going to bring essentially this part right here, this guitar, just quarter notes or eighth notes, excuse me. So let's just uh, make that uh, all parts. Copy one of these over. Okay. Okay, so I do need a little bass in there. So what was the note here? Okay, just want to match notes here. Okay, for some reason that didn't play. Don't know why. Spire. OK, 
in, obviously. There's a lot of work to be done there, but uh, I'm going to go with that right there. And let's see. So then the next outro would be right here. So let's set the locators. Okay. So we need to make this right here. Real copies. This right here, real copies. All right, shall we try this again? More than one way to skin a cat, so pardon me. All the cat lovers out there. Whoa! So fortunately, now you can see the loose ends that need to be taken care of there, you know, like where the Plugs have to resolve, that, that sort of thing. Find out what's kind of out of alignment here, like this serum effects. What is that? Okay, that's the, yeah, all right. That's the funny base. And so what you would do is you'd go into the plucks and you'd take this right here and copy it over here. Don't copy. Okay, so uh, logic is act being a little bit uh, buggy, but what you would do here is you'd go in here to these plucks into the edit window and you would just go let's see here okay you'd get rid of all these Okay. And then you just keep winding that down with the automation. Okay. And then you would be to your percussion outro. I just wanted to get this show on the road with this track. And I've been working on Logic on my computer all day. I actually published another video earlier. This one will be published probably in a couple days after I edit it down, get rid of all of the little uh, dead air, basically. I kind of cut that out. But all of the live stuff of me doing, producing, editing, and what have you, is left in. Okay, so so it's starting to look like a track, and here we have got it at. So it's going to wind down to about a six and a half minute track. I don't think I want to go any further than that. So this to right to this point is. 
58 seconds plus that is going to be six, 640 roughly, which will work. I don't want it to be too long. Anyways, that's where I'm going to leave it today. And I uh, hope you learned a little bit of something, gained a little bit of insight into kind of finishing out a track, dragging things around. And the main thing that I wanted to do today was just to get this thing on the road in, here in part four to where, hey, we can wind this thing down, put all the finishing touches in part five and six. The next part will probably be adding some effects, and I will work on the track because this isn't a start-to-finish type thing. It's kind of half and half. So I'm going to be uh, working on the track, getting things all tuned in, dialed in to where it makes a lot more sense musically, especially with the breakdown adding a little more interest. Maybe another bar in there, which would kick this up to another seven-minute track, but okay. Uh, and then, yeah, we'll just see you next time. And if you like this video, hit that like button. And Or if you want to be notified for part five and six, hit subscribe for you new viewers and hit the bell. I would greatly appreciate it. And thank you very much for watching one more time. And uh, take care.